We all know how popular online shopping is, but with online shopping comes more access for scammers to try and take advantage of you. From 2019 to 2022, there were nearly 51,000 complaints and reports to the BBB scam tracker in the U.S. and more than $22 million reported in losses. Those are alarming numbers, and I recently found myself in a situation where I could have been scammed. That's why the vice president of the South Dakota region for the Better Business Bureau, Jesse Schmidt, is here today. She's joining us to break down my situation in hopes that it can help us all avoid falling victim to online shopping scams. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you for having me, Brittany. I think this is the second or third time I've almost fallen victim to a scam. Well, again, it sh you know what? This shows that you're very normal. Yeah. And that's why they're so prolific, because they work. Right. And so I think it's great that you're willing to unpack this for all of the viewers and just how easy it is to happen. So in general, because I know my situation's a little bit different because it was through an app yes. where you can sell your own clothes, but just in general, how do these online shopping scams work? Well, there's a variety of ways, but they kind of lure you in through three different ways. You know, you spot an item and it's at a great price. The website can look professional because scammers, right, they do all the things. And, you know, so you're going to look at the reviews and then they lure you in and you've made the purchase and then you get ads that show you that maybe it's a fake website or that you just get an icky feeling that something's just not right and it, it just goes on and on then you're in a shipping scam and you know it it just is a big cycle downward when these things happen to us and then usually they take your money and you get nothing in return right absolutely or you end up losing even more money because you get a check, you deposit into the account, it looks like it's cleared, but a few weeks later, then it hasn't, then you get a bad check charge. I mean, and this, this is, is a my check. classic example. So right? let's explain it. I sure. was on Poshmark, I sell clothes on Poshmark, and I had an individual message me about one of my items. Um, it was like a $350 dress, I was selling it for 150 It never been worn, new tags, and they messaged me that something with, um, they're waiting for the funds to get in their account and they would rather send me, like mail me a check and then I could send them the address. And so I said, okay, well, when I get the check, I will send you the dress once I know that it's in my bank account. Well, then I got to thinking, okay, this doesn't seem normal. Why can't they just send it to me through Poshmark like everyone else does? That right. seems odd. Well, then I get a check for $1,250 and I was like, oh, maybe they're just sending money out to people for Christmas. <laughs> like they picked some random people and they're saying happy holidays. Yeah. No. no. I no. Googled it, thank God, before I put it in my bank account because it said that it acts as like a loan. I Googled the check name, where it came from. Yeah, that's so interesting. And then even if it wasn't, we, we've seen these happen before. People get a random check in the mail and they deposit it and it's from a stolen account. And then, so n now you're out the money and the merchandise and oh, here's a $40 bad check fee added on to it. So it's like insult to injury when those things happen. And when it comes to this, then obviously there's red flags along the way. I didn't know if maybe they just didn't want to not have to go through the app because they were skeptical about it. But what are some red flags that we should be looking for? Right. So you might be lured in by something on social media to begin with. Uh, and the reviews kind of ha all have the same information, maybe just a few different words. And the website's not very old. And you can easily figure out, like, when was this website created? And again, you know, we've talked a lot of times about misspellings, that sort of thing. And in your case, anybody, anytime somebody wants to get off that platform, we've talked this about this as it relates to romance scams, right? They don't want to work on the platform that they're within. And that's exactly what this scammer did. Wanted to get you off the Poshmark platform that probably has some safeguards built into it on to something different, right? And then they were communicating and sending you a check individually. So in my case specifically, if this ever happens to anyone, the red yes. flags I was looking for was first, the fact that they wanted to get off the app, but there could be a million reasons for that. There could be, but if you're on Poshmark, you know what the rules are. Right. So then obviously I didn't send the dress, but the check I got was for way, way more than I was asking. So that obviously another red flag. And not from the person that you had been, right. you know, conversing with. And then the language, a lot of times, it just seemed like the language was like, ma'am, I need, I need this please, like right now, like, can you let me know, can you answer? It was just very oddly written. 
I yes. feel like. And we talk about that a lot, right? Because so many times these are from scammers that are Eastern European, that they don't talk in the vernacular that we do. I wouldn't call you ma'am, no matter who I'm buying or selling something with, right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 so th again, a really, a really pretty big red flag that we uh, encourage consumers to just have their eyes and ears open to those sorts of things. And they never want to talk on the phone. Always, mm -hmm. always texting, always email, no conversations. But for your age group, texting is a very common form of communication mm -hmm. and not so much talking. Too. I will say though, after I responded back to the text, I asked, um, you know, I'm just curious, like what is your reasoning for not paying through the Poshmark app? I'm just a little confused on that. And I didn't get a response. Then I started getting nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, they have my address. What if they're coming to my house and they're going <laughs> to take me or something? So I was worried to come home after vacation because I told them that I was on vacation so I wouldn't be able to send it the dress for like a week. And then I'm right. like, oh my goodness, this was not smart of me to do at all. But, you know, you give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Yes, right? You think you're dealing with people that are like you, but they're criminals. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're in a criminal syndicate, so... And do they sometimes make it personal because they were saying they couldn't send the check right away because their daughter was in the hospital and they had fees to pay oh, for? Oh, that's so, so typical, right? Or they're giving you a great deal on this because it wasn't them. It was their, their brother who's in the military mm -hmm. and they just want to get rid of it. I mean, I've heard it all. It, again, yeah. the heartstrings, right? And now that you say that the good deal part... That reminds me, I was actually selling it for 130, but they were going to give me 150 for holding it and not selling it through the app and keeping it and ding, taking ding, it ding, off ding, for ding. them. <laughs> that just rang a bell. I was like, yeah. wait, did I sell it for that much? No, they were offering me more to hold it and doing this because it was helping them out. I hope you sold your dress. Well, I didn't. It's still on Poshmark. Though. Yeah, <laughs> go look for it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so so much, Jesse, for coming in today and giving us more tips and advice on this and helping us go through my experience. Thanks for having me.